We begin today's episode with some fairly hairy Starship news happening right now in South Texas. Then we'll talk about this weekend's manned SpaceX launch, Crew-1, and other missions to follow. And finishing with today's honorable mention, I'm Kevin and this is SpaceX in the News. All right, let's take a look at where Starship SN8 currently stands on its journey to 15 clicks. When we last left off on Friday, we were expecting the Mars rocket prototype to perform its second static fire at the end of the weekend, this time drawing propellant from its header tanks and lighting it with a single Raptor engine. But on Monday, the attempt was aborted after fueling began. The following afternoon, another try was given, the 10 minute siren was sounded, but for reasons not disclosed, the vehicle was recycled and everyone was on edge as we waited in anticipation for the methane laden butt belch. <laughs> which happened soon after, causing sparks to go forth into the air. And the rocket's red flare, the bombs bursting in air. No official reason was provided for the fireworks show, but it may have been caused by debris left on the pad or from the pad itself. Road closures for a third static fire on Wednesday were canceled, but it did eventually take place on Thursday night. Again, taking fuel from the header tanks and using possibly two Raptor engines, both good and bad news attached itself during what was supposed to be this final test prior to the 15 clicker. Regarding the sparks you saw and the melted metal dripping from one of the Raptor engines afterward, SpaceX maybe melted an engine pre-burner or fuel hat gas manifold, but whatever it is caused pneumatics loss, which means they lost control of Starship's hydraulic systems used to operate its valves. We need to design out this problem, says Elon, and so for about an hour, he wasn't sure if SN8 would survive this test because the liquid oxygen in the nose cone's header tank was warming up and boiling off with no place to go. If nothing interfered, it would have led to the rocket going. But thankfully, at least one burst disc in place for such situations did its job and venting was seen coming out of the nose. The road opened up shortly after, allowing the SpaceX team to approach and work on the vehicle. But regarding the Raptor issue, SpaceX will have to swap out at least one of the engines. Engine 42 was delivered earlier this week, presumably for SN9, but maybe they'll take it out of the dugout. Regardless, it may be a while before we get to see the 15-click flight. SpaceX will need some time to make the necessary changes like the engine swap, and I don't expect they'll design out the pneumatics problem with SN8, 9, or 10, maybe just some temporary fixes for that, but stay tuned. As far as subsequent Starships are concerned, SN9's nose cone also now has its flaps. Here's some happy little Bob Ross black magic for you. Maybe put a little bird up there, huh? No. We're gonna put a dead bird. However, the two main body parts are yet to be mated. SN10 is still in the mid bay, but is now joined by SN11, which is beginning its stacking regimen. And the first part of the super heavy booster, BN1, has made itself at home in the high bay next to SN9. A while back, Elon said that the booster is basically just Starship without the complications like flaps, nose cone, and a heat shield, so they'll be building full scale from the first iteration, unlike Starship that used Starhopper as its guinea pig. And when it hops, it will use two Raptors. Elon is hoping to change the booster's design to land back on the launch mount with no legs, which will require extreme precision. Jetty. <laughs> now moving on to Dragon. The next capsule to take NASA astronauts to the nest has arrived at Cape Canaveral's Launch Complex 39A, where it was integrated with its new Falcon 9 rocket and went vertical on the pad, before lighting up for a successful static fire on Wednesday. The crew arm has since swung over to it, which will be used by the four astronauts and support teams to enter the vehicle tomorrow. T-0 is set to happen at 7.49 p.m. Eastern. I'll be live for it so you can join me right here on my channel for that. In case you forget, make sure you hit the notification bell and select all. Do it, do it meow, meow. NASA and SpaceX are targeting December 2nd for the next resupply mission to the nest. CRS-21 will be the first mission to use the new Cargo Dragon capsule. Over the next 15 months, we will fly seven crew and cargo Dragon missions for NASA. That means that starting with crew one, there will be a continuous presence of SpaceX Dragons on orbit. And starting with the cargo mission, CRS-21, every time we launch a Dragon, there will be two Dragons in space simultaneously for extended periods of time. All this is why I call the ISS the nest, because it's home of fire-breathing Dragons. On Sunday, Rocket Lab will be launching their 16th mission, Return to Sender, 
from New Zealand. I mention it because it will be the first time they attempt to recover their electron booster with the parachute. And I am a fan of both Rocket Lab and the shoots, brah. Qualifying eccentric members can join me live for that. Then on the 18th, we have the super secret Falcon 9 launch and roll 108 and the Vandenberg launch of Sentinel-6 on the 21st. We can also expect Starlink-16 before the end of the month as well. And finally, this week SpaceX was awarded $30 million from the Department of Defense for fixed price task orders under the National Security Space Launch Phase 2 contracts. These task orders provide early integration studies and fleet surveillance for non-national security space missions. Before we hit up today's honorable mention, I'm happy to announce that our eccentric patches are finally available for order. My mom's a retired nurse and during COVID, she made masks and donated them to local businesses, hospitals, and churches entirely out of pocket because she's a nice lady like that. But because of the network that was created, she has since been able to start her own little home business, Classy Kids Embroidery. So our patches are homemade in the USA. Her shop is on Etsy. There's a link in the description. Please show her some love and support. Look at that. She's even giving you guys a discount right off the bat. Did I mention she's a nice lady? But now it's time for today's honorable mention. NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine has said that he plans on stepping down if Joe Biden is elected because success comes from relationships, meaning his relationship with President Trump and Vice President Mike Pence. On Sunday, Jim was at the Kennedy Space Center to welcome the Crew-1 astronauts, but told the press, quote, you have to have those relationships. Whoever the president is, they have to have somebody they know and trust and somebody the administration trusts. That person is not going to be me. The media called the presidential election for Biden the day prior on Saturday. However, all the votes are still not counted and there are currently recounts and legal proceedings underway due to how close the race is in some battleground states and concerns over voter irregularities. For those of you who have been around since my early cloud leaking days, you know I've always been a fan of the gym and supported his nomination. I hope he doesn't have to leave, but if he does, I want to wish him Godspeed. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching the show. Please do consider joining us on Patreon or here on YouTube's membership program so you can get more SpaceX news in your week. Have a nominal evening. See you right back here for tomorrow's crude launch. And until that time, Godspeed. Godspeed.